the Lord one more time? Why don't we just lift up our voice of praise? Let's just fill this house with praise unto the Lord right now. Oh, we love you and we praise you, Lord. We thank you, Lord God, for another day you've helped us with. You're helping us through another week. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness. We thank you, Lord, for your mercy. We thank you, Lord God, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. Lord, we love you and praise you, Lord. We pray that you would just fill this house with your mighty presence, Lord, with your mighty spirit. Lord, we love you and we praise you. We need you, Lord. We're nothing without you. We can't do anything without you. Fill this house. Fill this place, dear Lord God. Glory to your holy, mighty name, Lord. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one of
worship with one accord. Every praise. 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 Praise you, Lord God. We thank you, Jesus. Every praise, Lord, it belongs to you. Every word of worship, it belongs to you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And to bring our needs to you right now, and let's bring them to the Lord. We know God is able to do anything. Everybody say it with me again, exceeding, exceeding, abundantly, above all we can ask or that we can think. Hallelujah. Lord, we bring our needs before you right now. It doesn't matter how big the mountain may seem. It doesn't matter how great the sickness may look. It doesn't matter how big the problem may look. We know that you're bigger than that, and we trust and lean upon you, Lord, and not our own understanding. We seek you, Lord. We pray in the name of Jesus, healing upon those that are sick in their bodies. The sicknesses will leave. The diseases will leave. The viruses will leave. The problems will leave. In the name of Jesus, we speak strength. We speak encouragement. We speak healing. We speak it. We claim it, Lord. We praise you and we thank you for it. Glory to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. You're our healer. God, you're our healer. We're nothing without you. We're dependent upon you, Lord God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. It's good to see all of you tonight on Wednesday night. Thank you for coming and worshiping the Lord. Amen. With us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many have come just expecting anything to happen? Come on. Hallelujah, Lord, help us to get out of our boxes. Help us to get out of our doubt. Help us to get out from under any hindrances. Hallelujah. We want the Lord just to be able to move in our midst. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Going to give you an opportunity to give the offering and the tithe tonight. So we're going to pray the blessing upon this offering. And when you give, move around. Say hello, shake hands. If people kind of look at you with a resistance, well, then that's odd. Back off. But if they look like they're open, grab their hand, shake their hand. Come on, the devil's messed with us long enough, so we we gotta we gotta go on just have church the way we have church and get with it and not worry about it. Praise the Lord, God. We love you. We ask you to bless the offering and the tithes and use it for your glory and your will be done. And we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Hallelujah.
what you've done for me. Oh, Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Oh, Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Oh, Jesus, I'll never forget. No, never. Oh, Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Oh, Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Oh, Jesus, I'll never forget. No, never. I don't want to forget what you've done for me. No, I don't want to forget how you set me free. Oh, I don't want to forget how you brought me out. I don't want to forget, no, never. He's done so much for me. I cannot tell it all. I cannot tell it all. I cannot tell it all. He's done so much for me. I cannot tell it all. He has taken my sins away. Sin. Oh, how we'll shout and how we'll sing. Oh, when the redeemed are gathering in. Oh, when the redeemed are gathering in. Wash like snow and free from all sin. How we'll shout and how we'll sing. Sing and shout and dance about when we get over yonder. Oh, won't we have a time? Oh, I fly away, oh glory, I'll fly away when I die. Hallelujah, bye bye. about Jesus. He's all right. He's all right. He's all right. He's all right. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. Oh, can't nobody do me like Jesus. He's my Thank you, Jesus. Can't nobody do me like Jesus can. Hallelujah. How many times have you been in a situation and you just, you didn't want to talk to nobody? Sometimes you get in a discouraged situation, you just don't even want to talk. You don't want to be around anybody. Hallelujah. But you have a friend and you talk to him with no problem. Hallelujah. I said you talk to him with no problem. Amen. I never have a problem talking to Jesus. Hallelujah. Because he's a, he's a friend that's closer than anybody. Thank God. He is always with us and helping us. It's good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Hallelujah. And everybody, don't forget 
Sunday's Mother's Day. Hallelujah. It is a it is a day we honor. We give honor to mothers. And I have so many wonderful memories of my mother. Amen. Everybody is affected different on special days. Some people want to just stay home because somebody, uh, mother, father, whatever, passed away. And but I'm one of those, I just, you know, I want to come and just thank the Lord and praise the Lord and for all the great memories and all of the amen and be a supporter and encourager to others be here for others amen so we look forward to mother's day that is coming up i always enjoy mother's day because i get to hear my wife the only time i get to hear her amen is on mother's day mother's day and i always enjoy that very 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 much amen and so i'm thankful Amen, that I'm able to have her with me, have daughter-in-laws, and have my mother-in-law. Amen. Praise God. Well, let's go into the Word of the Lord, Revelation chapter 3, and I'll begin reading verse 11 through verse 13, and I just want to say that my, my last visit that I had with Brother Medlin, it was very good, very good. I was able to talk to him, him talk to me, didn't have a tube in his mouth anymore, and uh, just got to feel the presence of the Lord and praying and hearing him pray, speaking in tongues as the Holy Ghost was in that place and in that room in the hospital, and we just praised the Lord, amen, for his goodness that is helping him through that. Amen. Revelation chapter 3 and reading verse 11 and I'm going to read through verse 13. Behold I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast that no man take thy crown. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of God and he shall go no more out and I will write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God which is new Jerusalem which cometh down out of heaven from my God and I will write upon him my new name and he that hath an ear let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches and I want to talk to on the subject tonight the fight that never ends the fight that never ends let's ask the Lord to speak to us God we love you and we praise you and we thank you thank you for being with us thank you Lord for what you're doing Thank you, Lord, for what you did Sunday morning and Sunday night. Thank you for those people, Lord God, that are being moved and touched and stirred. And for what you're doing in our land, we praise you for it. We ask you to speak to our hearts tonight. And bless all that are watching live stream in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You can be seated. If you were raised up in a, a good family with good morals you were taught not to fight if you were raised up in a good family with good morals you were taught not to fight and you were taught that fighting is bad you were discouraged from fighting any good parents should discourage their child from fighting. And uh, I have thoughts of two fights in my life. 
Now there's more my, my wife, she talks about some, some, something in Liberty, Texas. I think we were going out and looking for the Saratoga light or something. And some drunks was up messing with us or something. And I was about to come out of the car. But there's two, two fights that really stand out in my life growing up. And uh, uh, one of them was at school. And when I was actually coming out of school, I can, I can see it so clearly. You never forget the first fight you have. And, uh, and then the guy that I fought ended up being one of my best friends. Isn't that weird? That's just real weird, that way that all turns out. And uh, then another one was in the backyard of my house. And a guy used to always bully me, scare me to death. He did. He scared me. He was just one of those kind of people that, you know, just acted like they were just a little, just a little short of having a full battery. And, and, and he would just scare me. He would do things. That, you know, I grew up watching him. Sometimes he'd act like he's going to push me out in front of a car, you know, and just bully stuff. And one time he shot me with a BB gun. I remember getting hit in the neck with a BB gun in, in his backyard. And just different things and different times of him bullying me. But something happened. I don't know what it was. Something kind of developed in me. And I, I just started feeling like, you know, I ain't going to take this no more. And, and this one time I messed with him. I was in my backyard, and he was on the other side of the fence, and, and he was walking. And I picked up a stick, and I threw it at him. And, man, he jumped over that fence. He'd come running up to me. He bowed up. And when he did, I just laid back and whopped. <laughs> I just wanted to prove I, I ain't scared of him. I, I don't know what made me do that. Man, he, it shocked him so much. I never had a problem from him no more, ever, ever. But, you know, as long as I was letting him do it, you know, he just, but I, I don't know what got into me, but there's two fights that just stand out to me uh, in my life. But when it comes to spiritual things, the Word of God encourages you to be a fighter. It's, it's almost like he's raising you up, you know, and saying, okay, son, here, you know, I want to make you a fighter. Because you're going to have a lot of bullies messing with you. You're going to have demons messing with you. You're going to have things that are always attacking you. And, and it's, it's almost like the Word of God is continually encouraging that you, you, you fight. It puts this mentality in us to, uh, of, of a fight. First Timothy 6 and 12, Apostle Paul said, Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto you are called and have professed a good profession before many witnesses. When it has to do with the kingdom of God, when it has to do with eternity, it has to do with your soul. When it has to do with laying hold on things that God's word has promised you. When it has to do with keeping possessions God says belongs to you. Keeping treasures that God said he has given unto us. Then it's called the good fight. It's the good fight. It's a good fight of faith. You're fighting a good fight. The Apostle Paul said this in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7. He said, I have fought a good fight. I finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness which the Lord the righteous judge shall give me at that day not to me only but unto all of them also that love his appearing there are some people they're afraid of his appearing there are some people that just really don't feel anything just because they're just seared but 
It's those that love his appearing. Is anybody in love with the Lord so much you're ready to see him? You want him to come because you, you love his appearing. You've lived your life for this. You have, you have your whole life. The, the whole purpose of all that we do is, is, is to be with the Lord. So the apostle said, I have fought a good fight. I finished my course. I kept the faith. Therefore, the crown is waiting for me. And it hadn't been taken from me. Come on. Anybody fighting? Anybody fighting? It's a good fight. It's the good fight of faith. He said, I've kept what God's given me. I've kept it. The crown is still there. I've not lost it. I've held on to it. In the book of Revelations, the Lord says this in Revelations 3 and 11. I'm going to read it. King James, and I'm going over to the NIV. Behold, I come quickly. Hold on or hold fast to what you have, that no man take your crown. I'll read it again, this time NIV. I'm coming soon. Hold on to what you have. I'm coming soon. Hold on to what you have. I'm coming soon. I'm going to keep saying this. I'm coming soon. Hold on to what you have. Don't lose it. Don't let anything happen. Don't let anybody take that from you. Don't let anything take your crown. I'm coming soon. Hold on to what you have so that no one will take your crown. You fight. Whatever it takes, fight. Have a fighting spirit when it comes to holding on to the things God has given you. Amen. There is a, a doctrine that is, that is taught, and it is, it is very troubling because of the way that it affects people. That doctrine is once saved, always saved. That goes against the word of God. He says, you better hold on to what you've got. And you fight. You fight. Whatever you do, fight. Do not let anybody take your crown. Don't let anything take your crown. When it comes to the eternal things of God. When it comes to the promises of God, when it comes to the things of faith, you have to fight and you have to keep fighting. And it is a fight that never ends. It does not end. You can never sit back and relax. Never. You have to keep fighting. And you have to keep fighting. And you have to keep fighting. And you have to keep fighting. Because there's continually things that are trying to take away those things that God has given you. Those promises that God has given you. The crown that God says, I've got laid up waiting for you. There's an enemy that is continually, continually, continually. You've got to fight and you cannot stop. I don't care how old we get. I don't care for a 120. You've got to keep a fighting spirit when it comes unto the things of God. You've got to be able to say at the end, I kept the faith. I held on to everything God gave me and I never let go. I fought the good fight. I kept my faith and the crown is still waiting for me. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. We can never, ever, ever get a mindset. I'm saved. I'm saved. I'm saved no matter what happens. I have a crown of righteousness laid up for me no matter what happens. That's not the Word of God. That is not the Word of God. I would love, 
I, I mean, really, I would love to believe that. I would love to just sit back and know no matter what I do or what goes on or, yeah, I'm, I'm there. I've got to fight the good fight. And I got to keep holding on. Say, devil, you're not taking it from me. You're not taking what you've done for me. You, you, you're not going to take that from me. And you're not going to get me back to that. And I'm not going to end up back over there doing that again. Hallelujah. Praise God. In Revelation 3 and 11. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start reading again. I'm going to read all the way through verse 13, the NIV. I'm coming soon. Hold on to what you have so that no one will take your crown. Him who overcomes, let's do it again. Him that overcomes, let's say it again. Him that overcomes, I'll make a pillar in the temple of my God. And never again will he leave it. Never again will he go back out. Never again will he go back out. He's going to stay. He's there. But he's got to overcome. He's got to fight. He's got to fight. He's got to hold on. Can't let. Hallelujah. I will write on him the name of my God, the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem which is coming down out of heaven from my God. I will also write on him my new name. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He who overcomes, I will make a pillar in the temple of God. And never again will he leave it. That means people can leave it Come back and leave it. I've been saying this. You don't want to be playing that game no more. You don't want to be playing that game no more. You want to be in it and staying in it and fighting for everything you got. And do not let the devil take nothing from you. Don't let him. Don't let him. Do not allow him. Fight. Fight the good fight of faith. And let no man take your crown. Fight the fight that never ends until you have finished your course and you have heard him say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Satan, kiss my foot. You had the last swing at me. Amen. But keep fighting until, until you hear him say, well done. You keep fighting. You keep fighting. You keep fighting. You be a fighter. You be known as a fighter. Hey, man, I'm fighting a good fight. I'm going to heaven. I'm going to keep my crown. I'm going to hold on to what God has got laid up for me. I'm going to hold on to what is promised unto me. Hallelujah. I want to end up in the place where it says you're not leaving no more. Hey, man, you're not leaving no more. I want to be a pillar right there in the kingdom of God. Oh, praise God. Praise God. Amen, amen. Amen. We can never... Never, 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 never end up in a place where you're just sitting back and say, let's ride Clyde. If you're going to be an overcomer and you're going to stay an overcomer, you cannot take it easy. I'm going to say it again. I don't care how old we are. I, can't, I don't care how old we are. I cannot get the I'm going to take it easy attitude. You have to stay on the offensive. You have to stay aggressive. You have to stay aggressive. We can't ever let up. We can't ever get comfortable. We can never get passive. We, can't, we cannot get into that place. Where, Let's ride Clyde. Let's just ride Clyde. Hallelujah. If we move from being aggressive about the promises of God to being passive, that's called backsliding. Amen. Amen. Sometimes we'll sit there and think, man, we're, you know, we're just out here in the E zone. No, you're probably backslidden. Come on. 
Amen. Come on. I don't want to end this thing backslidden because I don't have the fight no more. I don't have that determination that says, I'm going to keep holding on to the promises of God. I'm going to keep holding on. Amen. I'm, I'm the promises God has for the church. The revival God has for the church. The things God's promised his people. I'm going to keep on. I'm going to keep fighting for it. 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 Amen. I'm going to keep fighting for it. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to be one of those guys, you know, whenever my time is, if, you know, if, if I'm not one that just rises and meets him in the air and, you know, I breathe my last breath, I, I want to be that one that's known. That, that dude right there, he just kept fighting. He didn't let up. He just kept on. He kept holding on. He kept claiming the promise. He kept speaking the promises, and he kept fighting, and he didn't stop. Hallelujah. Because the Lord talks about that. I think it was the, the lady he was using as the illustration. He said, when I come back, I want to find this kind of faith on earth. That lady that went to the unjust judge, and she just kept on. 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 And he, he wouldn't do it because of who she was or status, position, or money. He did it because she just kept on. She just kept on. She just kept on. She just kept on. He said, when I come back, am I going to find this kind of faith on earth? Hallelujah. I want him to know that I'm one that just kept on and kept on. Well, God said it, and I'm going to keep on. Hallelujah. I'm going to keep on. I'm going to keep on. I'm going to keep on. And 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 I'm going to keep on. If he said it in his word, I'm going to keep on. I'm going to keep preaching it. I'm going to keep claiming it. I'm going to keep fighting for it. I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to let up. Nobody's going to talk me out of it. I'm just going to keep on. And I'm going to keep on. And I'm going to keep on. Because I'm called to fight. 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 Fight the fight that never ends. Fight. Fight. Hallelujah. Amen. I, I said it before. I don't think it's been too long since I've said it, but I'll never forget my stepfather when he was dying. He just, he was one of those guys, I'm talking about on the physical side, you know. He just kind of like he'd just roll over and lay over to whatever was going on. And that would just get all over me. I mean, I'm like, fight, dude, fight. Yeah. Get fighting, yeah. you don't just roll over. Well, uh, you know. that, that's just me. Yeah. Fight, live. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Jesus gives us an illustration. He gives us many illustrations. Matthew chapter 12, verse 43. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places. He seeks rest. He can't find it. And he says, I'm going to go back to my house where I come out of. And when he comes back, if he finds it empty and swept and garnished, he goes and he takes with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in and they dwell there. And the last condition of that person is worse than beginning. Even so shall it be unto this wicked generation. He's telling you something here. That unclean spirit. When we talk about salvation, we, we're talking about being set free and delivered. The, the things we're forgiven of and we're set free from and delivered from are unclean spirits. And we're delivered from many of them. Many of them. Don't you think now I can ride easy, Clyde? Because here's the thing. Every one of them are coming back with seven greater than they are. Every one of them. It wasn't just one you just got freed from. There were many. And they're continually coming back. 
And they're not knocking on the door. It's not this gentle Lord that says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. These dudes are trying to kick things in and to get in. They're, they, are, they are trying to get back in. And you've got to fight. And you can't stop fighting. I'm telling you, that once saved, always saved business isn't the truth. Those demons that come out of you, they're going to come back with seven greater than they were. And they're all coming back and they're fighting to get back in. They're trying to get back in. They're going to keep on trying. And they're going to keep on trying. And you got to keep on fighting. 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 You got to keep on fighting. And you got to keep on fighting. Whatever you do, don't let that come back in. Whatever you do, don't let that spirit come back in. Because you're not just getting that spirit. You're getting seven greater than that one you had and now you've got a multitude of seven graders uh, that are coming back in you got to fight and you got to keep fighting 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 and you better fight the fight of faith and whatever you do do not let anything take your crown hallelujah oh come on somebody you got to fight you can't let up. You can't. If, 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 you, if a church is going to have revival, it's because there's some people that are fighting. It don't just come on the bunch of folks that aren't doing anything. No. Those folks go to sleep. You've got to fight for it. You've got to fight for it. It's a fight you can't ever let up. You can't. You've got to keep that mentality. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to let any. I'm not going to let anything take away my promises. I'm not going to let anything take away what God's done. I'm not going to let any, any anything or anybody take this from me. You've got to keep it. You've got to keep fighting for it. You've got to keep fighting for it. Fight. Fight, fight, and hold on to what God has given you. Hold on to your liberty and your freedom. Hold on. Hold on. Don't let anything happen to you. Don't let anything come into your spirit. Get you set down in a bunch of heaviness and bound and messed up in your head. And then next thing you know it, in comes something else. And then in comes something else that's greater. And come on, you got to keep on fighting and you got to keep on fighting. And when you got to keep on fighting, you don't let anything take your crown. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus said in Matthew 11 and 12, from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has been forcefully advancing and forceful men lay hold on it. Hallelujah. hallelujah. You, you, you've, it's, you've got to have a determination where you just, you're just like, I'm holding on, I'm not letting go. In the Old Testament, you have a representative that is a type of the New Testament church. So much is connected to David. So much <laughs> is connected to David. A man that was called the psalmist, also king, King David. Also known as the light of Israel. The light of Israel. He was the man that represented the exuberant worship. The exuberant praise. He, he represented the, the dancing before the Lord. With all of his might. He was the light of Israel. He was the, he was a fire. He 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 had the zeal. He he had the heart after God's heart. He would dance before the Lord with all of his might. He was the one that said, "Let everything that hath breath praise you, the Lord." 
If you've got breath in your body, you need to praise the Lord. And then he began to name all the instruments and all the things. And he's beat on the drums, play the instruments, play the loud sounding instruments, play the stringed instruments, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, clap your hands, shout. All of these things, be exuberant, dance before the Lord. All of this, this was David. This is a man after the heart of God. He, there was an inside, there was a connection with David that he had. Uh, there was that, that, that praise that he had. Amen. That, that, uh, this, this New Testament shouting and jumping and hollering and, and rejoicing and all this stuff. Amen. It ties back. It goes back to the kingdom of David. Amen. And they, they even knew that. They said, when you, when you see the Gentiles start speaking in tongues, this is the restoration of the kingdom of David. Hallelujah. There, there's a connection. Clapping, shouting, dancing, the jumping, the leaping. The, amen. But David, we all remember David. We all have our Bible stories in our Sunday school classes and and when David fought his first giant named Goliath he was victorious incredible story awesome story everybody else everybody the whole army of Israel they were singing I shall not be moved they locked on to that old hymn and they just said that's where we'll stay. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. And Goliath was out there just speaking abominations, mocking the people. God had a man that had a little fire in his britches. He said if I could just get him out on the battlefield, I'd get him from the sheep pasture. Get him bringing some food to his brothers or something. Get him in the right place at the right time. Got one man. He's got some fire in him. He's not going to put up with this. And he's not going to go sit with everybody else and say, I shall not be, I shall not be moved. He gets close enough and he hears the sound. And he says, hey, what's going on? Nobody going to fight that guy? You hear what he's doing? None of you doing nothing. You're scared to death and he's out there defying our God. Let me have him. I got fight in me. Give him to me. I want him. I want him. That's what David was saying. I want him. And we love the story. The story of David that went up against the Philistine war machine. And he won with a slingshot or a stone. And the victory, it gives you faith. It's a message of faith. It gets people, you know, it, it just, it, don't tell them how many people it's helped through the ages. It's helped them get up out of the I cannot be moved zone and jump up and say, let's go get him. Yeah. And man, they take off and they're still living for God today. Yeah. Yeah. They heard a story about David. Man, it lit faith up in them. God used it and they jumped up and they're still living for God today. Yeah. But there's a lot of people that also, those kind of people, they jump up and they, they spin out crank up and fire everything they got up and they go for just a little bit. And they're no longer in church. I've been around many of those people. Amen. But it's, it's because there's more to the story about the man with the, the fire. There's, there's more to it. You, you, we can't, it's not just right there, David, and look what David did. And, and it activated their zeal and it did that initial response as a fight, and faith, and here we go. And, but there's more of the story. Second Samuel 21 and 15. Moreover, the Philistines 
had yet war again with Israel. And David went down, his servants with him. David fought against the Philistines, and David waxed faint. Do y'all know what that means? David was laying on the ground. David had taken a whipping. Amen. Because it's war again, buddy. Amen. You had that giant you just fought with, but there's nothing coming. And if you don't got the fight in you, you're in trouble. David had to war again. And David almost died on the battlefield. This giant with a strange name, Ishbe Banab. Don't name your children Ishbe Banab. Ishbe Banab almost killed David. He thought he did kill David. 2 Samuel 21 and 16, and Ishbi Banab, which was of the sons of the giant, the weight of whose spear weighed 300 shekels of brass in weight, he being girded with a new sword, thought to have slain David. He thought David was dead. But Abishai, the son of Zariah, secured him, meaning he rescued David. And smote the Philistine, killed him. And then the men of David swear unto him, and they said, Thou shalt go no more out with us to battle, that thou quench not the light of Israel. Your fire almost went out. <laughs> that's that same David. And that's because you got to keep fighting. This thing getting off, but now, man, I'm in here and we got it made now. No, friend, there's another one coming. And what messed with you yesterday? Don't compare to that one you're facing now. Come on, somebody. Help me preach. If it were not for David's mighty men, David would have died. serious I am thankful for these men that God has raised up around me I'm going to tell you right now I am very 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 thankful for the men that God has raised up in this church hallelujah I'm telling you there's things that goes on we don't understand, but you, when you got the fighting men fighting, when one of you starting to get a pretty good whipping and the other ones are coming in, hallelujah, they, you, I'm telling you, there's something about that. There's something about that. Amen. Praise God, praise God, praise God. I say thank God for the people that are around me that know how to pray, that know how to worship, that know how to lock in on something and go at it in the spirit and to fight 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 and to fight. The fight that never ends. 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 And then you read the next verse, 2 Samuel 21 and 18. And it came to pass after this, there was again a battle with the Philistines. And then you read a bunch of names that I'm not here to try to figure them out right now. And then you read another verse, 2 Samuel 21, 19, going into the next verse. And there was again a battle in Gop with the Philistines. And there's a bunch of other names, and they slew the brother of Goliath and the Jittite and the staff whose spear was like a weaver's beam. What I'm trying to tell you is it's fight again. Fight again. Fight again. Fight again. 
2 Samuel 21 and 20. And there was yet a battle in Gath where it was a man of great stature that had on every hand six fingers and on every foot six toes, four and twenty in number. He also was born to the giant. And you go to verse 22, 2 Samuel. These four were born to the giant in Gath and fell by the hand of David and by the hand of his servants. This is illustrations. These are typologies. This is the fire, the light of Israel, the man that's got the shout and the jump and the dance and full of zeal and the one that faced that Goliath that had everybody else locked down and took him out like that. But friend, there's another fight coming and you got to keep fighting. You got to keep fighting. I got to keep fighting. You got to keep fighting. We can't stop. We got to keep the fire burning. We got to keep the light going. Come on. He said, let your light so shine before men. We cannot let the enemy take that light out. You can't. You've got to stay fighting. I've got to stay fighting. This thing that we're doing, this fight that we're fighting, it's this revival that sometimes I feel like I'm out there and a bunch of people think I'm crazy and I've lost my mind. But I've got something inside of me that says keep fighting for the promises of God. You keep fighting for what you're reading in the Word of God. Don't stop. Don't let back. I don't care what you're seeing. I don't care who's with you, who's not with you. You get out there and you fight this fight. It's the good fight. You keep the fight inside of you. Don't matter if nobody else is coming with you. If you got to face it alone, you get out there and you face it alone. But you fight. Whatever you do, fight. Whatever you do, fight. Do not lose ground. Do not go back. Do not backslide. Do not go to sleep. Do not get into a place uh, to where you're complacent. Uh, you've got to keep the fire. You've got to stay on fire. Whatever you do, keep Keep the people praying. Whatever you do, keep giving your all. Keep the people fasting. Keep encouraging one another. You got to help one another. You got to rescue one another. You got to encourage one another. Keep encouraging your friends. Keep encouraging the pastor. Keep encouraging your neighbors. Keep encouraging the people. Keep fighting. Keep encouraging. Keep praying. Keep fasting. Keep lifting each other up. Persevere. Don't stop. Don't stop. Keep fighting and never stop. Hallelujah. Let nobody take your crown. Let anything take your crown. This is a good fight. Hallelujah. There's places in Scripture where you, get, you can see with times where the people were down. And, and there's strange sayings like, like this. And the carpenter encouraged the goldsmith. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of strange. And the carpenter encouraged the goldsmith. You'd think it'd be the other way around. Right. The goldsmith is to do with high prestige. But it says, and the carpenter encouraged the goldsmith. Right. Hallelujah. Yeah. Listen to me. You need everybody. Yeah. You need everybody. And you need to be encouraging everybody. Right. We need encouragement. We need to encourage each other. We've got to. You've got to. Yeah. We got to keep fighting. Yeah. We got to keep praying. We've got to keep fasting. We got to keep having the kind of church that we know God wants us to have. I don't care what everybody else is doing. Amen. We got to have a fire burning. And I'm going to keep shouting and I'm going to keep dancing and I'm going to keep jumping and I'm going to keep whatever it may look like I'm going crazy and losing my mind. But I'm going to hold on to what I know is true. And I know this church that is Holy Ghost filled delivered. I know because God set me free. I know what God did in my life. I know how God delivered me. I know what God set me free from. I know the power of those giants. I know how they'll destroy. I know how they will kill and they will steal. I know what they'll do to your marriages. They'll do to your children. I know. I know. And I'm not going to let up and I'm not going to stop. I'm going to keep fighting and 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 I'm not going to stop. Hallelujah. This is the fight we've got to fight. And it can never stop. Let nobody 
take our crown. Keep your faith. Keep your faith. Hold on to the promises of God. Hold on to those promises. Keep your fire burning. Cannot let anything put that fire out. Amen. Come on, musician. Who I got one in here. Hallelujah. And my wife right here. But what I'm saying is, church, whatever you do, don't don't quit. Don't quit. Don't quit. People that are watching me tonight, if you're, if you're just sitting back, kind of taking it easy, come on out. Get back out to Wednesday night church. Get back out to Wednesday night church. I can't be one of those guys that just says, no, y'all just go and take it easy. I can't do that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I can't do that. Amen. Even more so as we see the end upon us. There needs to be more strength and encouragement coming from one another than there has ever been before. We need to be assembling ourselves together, encouraging one another, praying for one another, fasting for one another, helping one another. Come on. Hallelujah. And I mean that for all of us. It don't matter how religious or spiritual or whatever somebody looks. Listen to me. David would have died if it had not been for those others around him. Because he had another fight to fight and get in the battle. And he couldn't have done it without the others there. He wouldn't have. He wouldn't have made it. But there was others. They jumped on the scene. They fought. They rescued him. And they helped him. And got him through it. You've got to fight this fight of faith. My mind... It goes down memory lane, going all the way back as far as me pastoring in 1995 was when I first pastored it around Father's Day time. And all the years and all the many people I've seen come, receive the Holy Ghost, get all fired up and excited. They don't realize you got to get this thing, and then you got to fight the rest of your life. you got to fight the rest of your life. Because everything you got set free of is going to be trying to get back in with seven greater. Everyone that left is coming back with seven greater, and he's trying to get back in. And if he can get back in, amen, hallelujah. If he can get back in, friend, you've had it. Hallelujah. We got to keep fighting. You got to keep fighting. We got to keep fighting. And say, I kept the faith. I fought the good fight. And I have a crown laid up. And no man has taken it from me. Nothing has taken my crown. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, praise God. And I'm not going out anymore. Amen. Hallelujah, there's no more out. It's in and it's staying in for eternity. That's it. Praise God, praise God. Praise. Hi, this is Pastor Kevin Martin, and I just want to thank you all for joining us today, tuning in and being a part of our service we hope that it was a blessing to you and that you were uplifted and encouraged and felt the presence of the Lord. If you would like to know more about our church, please join us at www.atascacitaupc.com and you will find all of the ministries. You will find pictures where you can take a journey and see everything that's been going on at the Pentecostal Church of Atascacita. And uh, we hope that you join us again very soon. God bless you.